Yes. All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to today's video. This is my friend Okawari TV. And today we're in Nakano Broadway. Nakano Broadway is kind of a big mall that started in what, the 70s? Yeah, about 70s, 60s. So there's a bunch of like shops in there. There's anything from like anime figures to retro games. So when Okawari is not out giving out tours to the Japanese nightlife and izakayas, he has a Instagram page where he's all about Pokemon cards and collectibles. So he's gonna show us around to some of his favorite card shops. And mm. then we're also gonna go check out some of the retro game shops that we can find here in Nakano Broadway. Yep. Let's go. You excited? Let's do it. I'm hyped. Ready. Let's go. All right. Let's go. Oh. All right, first retro game store over here. Let's see what they have. Their, their outside looks pretty pretty interesting. They got Big Heat, Super Famicom, Metal Max Returns. Don't see that one often. And then they got a twin Famicom in the box. I have this exact twin Famicom, but not in the box. And not for 24,000. That's crazy. Their, uh, their prices are up there, but like for a store like this, that's something you would expect. Let's get inside and see what they have. <laughs> I love their, their, their Famicom wall. They do have quite the selection. Let's try to find ones that we usually don't. Oh, the Goonies 2. 780 is not bad for the Goonies 2. Hello Kitty Island Adventure. So they have Akira. It's kind of cool. It's more of a visual novel than like a game, but 2480 is a lot. Oh, Urban Champion. This is a game where you just beat the crap out of each other underneath a building. This is so cool. I didn't know this was out for the Famicom. I thought it was like an NES game. I at least thought it had a different name, like River City Ransom. They got both versions of Devil World. But these oh, are the, okay. this is, one of these is the re-release. Um, but yeah, it's like 100 yen different, but 680 and, and 580 is not terrible for these. This is hard off prices. Like actually, I think they're beating hard off with okay. some of these. Sky Destroyer, you know? Kid named Sky is shaking in his boots. <laughs> All right, Super Momotaro Densetsu. This is, I keep mispronouncing this one every game and I finally got it right. That's the cool thing about the Famicom. Like they're grouped by these different ones. Like as you can see like Bandai, they had their own versions of these cases. And then Konami over here, they had these boxy looking ones. This is Goonies 2. Like this is the original Nintendo ones. Donkey Kong Jr. for 480, that's not too bad. And here you can see Namco's version of it. They have a little Namco in a all right, so this is the first shop I like to show people. I got everything from like Dragon Ball, Sailor Moon, Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, all that stuff, even Magic the Gathering. So this is like their wall of Pokemon cards. That's all crazy. This, all this stuff right here. They got every generation. Yeah. Oh, these are all like the, the old packs that they have in the old pack corners. Right, yeah. right, right. So like you see the back logo, that's how the old Pokemon cards used yeah, to look like. The OG starter decks too. Oh yeah. This one's sealed. And his original packing is like 50,000 yen. Oh, 50,000 yen. They got all the new ones in the bottom too, all the new sets. I always wondered what these things are. They're worth a lot. And they came, like this one's like 25,000. I think they came with like bubble gum or like something back in the day. Slam Dunk over here, Yu Yu Hakusho. And all the OG anime cards. Also, what's up with your back? It flashes. <laughs> So here we have these auction boxes and essentially what this is is real life eBay. You can rent these and then you put your stuff in it and then the clerk will sell it. So if you can see they're all individually priced yeah. and some of these have cards, some of these have action figures, some of these have a bunch of stuff. Are you a big One Piece guy? Not too much, to be honest. I started the series after the Netflix one. Like, yeah. I, saw, I saw the Netflix live action one. I, yeah, me too. I saw it. I, I really like the live action, but I haven't started, like, watching One Piece for it yet. I mean, it's a lot that's of... That's a big commitment. <laughs> I love this Chainsaw Man figure. Still haven't seen Chainsaw Man, but I love I, how it looks. I, I've seen it. Oh, look, they have a... They got a first edition of a champ. Oh, there we go. English for 13, 100 bucks, basically. You yeah. got more cards over here. This is, uh, I'm pretty, like, I, I'm not really into newer packs. So this box is 25,000 yen. Okay. So. But this one, it says, okay, 25,000 yen. I have a couple of those. These go hard. 
These are uh, these are pretty cool. They're unpainted. Mm -hmm. I guess it's like part of the movie. I haven't seen One Piece Red yet, but it's it's, it's either, yeah. they're really, really cool. Good. Yeah, these Akira gachas, man. They've been around forever because they don't make them anymore. But if you find them for a good price, they're hard. They're good. They got every Lego figurine over here. That's crazy. They're numbered too. That is dope, actually. Oh, it's cool. Like the little stand they're on. Yeah. It's like set up that way. Oh, they like Dis Everything's Disney, I think, mostly. They got the, the <laughs> original ones in the back. Those are probably expensive. Like the, uh, you see the astronaut and the knight? That's the OG Lego one. And back to the retro games. This time we're in the Mega Drive section where we have DJ Boy for 3,480. I like DJ Boy. It's a great little beat em up type game. Then look at this packaging that they have. This plastic shell around it, it allows me to pick up the game, look at the condition, turn it around, see it from all angles, and it's, it still protects the game. Like you know it's gonna be in the condition that you find it. It's also so much more fun to browse through than just looking at everything through this glass case that no one's gonna open because it's so ridiculously expensive and out of reach. Then Super Hang On over here, absolute classic, great price, great game. And then look at that, for $27.80 you can get this great shoot em up, Dai Senpu, known to us as Twin Hawk for the Mega Drive, absolute classic, highly recommend this one. And that $27.80 I don't think it's that expensive, especially for a shoot em up considering how a lot of these shoot em ups are so up there in price, right? Then again, affordable shoot em up, Whip Rush, very very difficult one, but you know, aren't they all? <laughs> As much as I love playing these, there's absolutely no chance that I get anywhere in these games without infinite continues or putting the arcade machine on free play mode. And here we have Vermillion, another RPG, which is, uh, I think it's a good RPG, but definitely play it in English if your Japanese language skills aren't there yet, especially reading. This is one of my favorite shops out here in Nakano Broadway, obviously, if you look at my shirt. This is their wrestling shop. So half of the store is dedicated to Kinikoman and then the other side over here is completely dedicated to vintage wrestling stuff. So we've got figures, we've got actually most of originally ring-worn tiger mask masks and a bunch of other wrestlers and, and this is this is really excited. It's really excited. Let's go. Let's go inside and see what they have over here. Let's go. Yeah, we got Rowdy Roddy Piper over here. This is called the Tiger Mask Omikuji for luck in your life. <laughs> Old, old wrestling magazine, Tiger, Tiger Mask. Mask DVDs, like from all over the place. So this is WrestleMania. All WrestleMania right there. They got it. Old WrestleMania. We've got some New yeah. Japan, some All Japan, WrestleMania 21. Survivor they got Series 2. Damn. Basically everything that you're looking for, they got it. And it's always different because they buy stuff too, right? They even got like the old figurines from like the early SmackDown era. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And those are classic. Raw. All right, so this is what I was talking about, all the old wrestling masks. No Rey Mysterio, unfortunately, but these are all Japan, ring-worn, either Lucha Libre mask. But like over here, we've got the Kinikuman, which is the, the anime, and he's got a bunch of these masks because there's wrestlers based on him. We've got some over here. It's, it's, it's really, really cool to see. If you're a fan of pro wrestling, this is, this is the shop. Look at this one, 99,000 yen. These are crazy expensive. Let's go to the other side and check out these uh, muscle figures. So this is what I was talking about. This is uh, Kinikeshi, which is like uh, eraser little toys that you used to get in vending machines in the 80s. America had these. They're called Muscle Bros or Muscle with like, it was an abbreviation or something like that. I'm not familiar with those, but here you can buy a giant bag for 2,800 yen. And uh, these are all commons. And then some of these individual ones here, they go for a crazy amount of money and they picked them out and they put them on the wall here. But yeah, these little eraser figure things, right? They're like mass, mass produced. So there's a million of them. Yeah. And if you're going to collect something that's like affordable, this this would be it. But, <laughs> you know, as a, as a wrestling fan, I think I should, but you're always going to have space. You can't actually use these actual erasers, can you? I think they would make bad erasers, but it's also like, because they're made like a bit more stiff to keep the, the shape. Yeah. A lot of these toys, if you can see, they're like wrestling related. So these are figures from Kinikuman. that are, like Kinikuman is an anime that's heavily, heavily wrestling inspired. Yeah. He's essentially a wrestler. It's, uh, you, you love it or hate it, it's not for everyone. But then his old, old figures are uh, over here. But essentially, like I know this one, this is from the, uh, the Genuine Friendship <laughs> muscle collection that they used to have a while back. And these are, these are pretty cool. 
But these are new ones, like they still make yeah. stuff for this. This is from the Super Nintendo era, 16,500. That's how expensive. That's crazy, F-Zero Night League, real racing simulation game. It's just cars. This is such a disappointment if you buy this and he's thinking it's gonna be some cool Super Nintendo It's literally just a board game. Yeah. <laughs> then back at the retro game store, we found a boxed Famicom section with Devil World for 1980, not bad. Dokuganryu Masamune from Namcod, a strategy game that's pretty cool but relatively unknown. And can't have a Famicom collection without good old Top Gun, which apparently is not as difficult as the angry video game nerd made it out to be all those years ago. Then here we have Afterburner, which, impressive as it is, never came out in the West officially. There is a Tengen version, of course, that we know. And this was later worked back into this release by Sunsoft, which is pretty impressive. I think it's really cool that we even have Afterburner on a Nintendo console and especially the Famicom. Eh? So these days you're better off playing any other port, but really cool that this exists and was made back in the day. And unfortunately a bit on the expensive side, but definitely a classic Clue Clue Land. Really good condition box, but yeah, a bit on the pricey side. Then Korth. Apparently Korth is controversial on the internet. Some people really hate this game, some people really love it. I, it's a shoot 'em up and it's like Tetris and it's, I don't know, why do people hate this? It's such a good game. Then Dragon Buster, again a Napcot classic, love these plastic cases. Then a whole line of Famista Baseball, 91, 92 and 93, really cool to see them lined up. And this is a fun one, Pachinko Daisakusen 2, it's a pachinko game that you play with the little controller. And fighting golf, there's no fighting, it's just golf. That's it. It's a golf game. If you feel like you want to take a chance of getting winning things like a PS5, Switch, uh, Pokemon card. This is 2,000 yen gacha. So right here. So I'll show you how to do it. So you put in 2,000 yen. By the way, these are all the winners that have won something on there. And literally, it's going to be 2,000 yen. It could be anything from a PS5. What if you get a 2,000 yen sticker? Oh, I got a B. What does that mean? From one of these, a B rank. Oh, I won a game. For 2,000 yen, Monster Hunter Rise. I did I am awesome. So Monster Switch. Rise is definitely worth more than 2,000, yeah. I think most Switch games start at three, 4,000. I have it on Steam, it's pretty good. Hey, so this one? Yes. Bro, imagine winning a PS5 on camera. That would've been good. I did I am awesome. There you go. <laughs> the game wasn't in there. That's pretty cool, you just got a Switch game for 2,000 yen. That's like Wait a crazy good deal. <laughs> Then let's take a look back at the retro game Sonic Jam for the Sega Saturn. They had quite a bit of Sega Saturn games, so let's go through some of them. We've got Sonic R. This is this is a really cool. I'm not a big Sonic fan, but I played this game and it is really fun. Like it's it's definitely worth a try. Then Dodonpachi, again for the Saturn, but disc only. You don't really see a lot of disc only games in Japan, but this one is definitely worth having, even if it's just a disc. That price still matches it, but hey, it's it's Dodonpachi, man, the legendary shoot 'em up. Again, one of those really difficult games, but absolutely a game worth having in your collection. Then another game absolutely worth trying, if only for the low price, Mobile Suit Gundam Side Story 2 and Devil Summoner Shin Megami Tensei. Again, a Dreamcast game. This is a visual novel type game. It's text heavy, so really try to get the English version if you can. Then Virus, a sort of a point and click adventure. Definitely wouldn't call this a import friendly game by any means, but if you can get your hands on the English version, it's, it's worth a try. Then an RPG series that I keep running into, but I'm just not familiar with, Langrisser 3. I hope there's a English version of this, or at least a fan translation, because the more I look these up, the more they just seem intriguing for me to play. Like 2D RPGs on the Saturn just look really, really good in my opinion. Then in the same boat we have Black Slash Matrix, another isometric RPG, again looks really cool, I think this is more of a tactical RPG. And of course Puyo Puyo Sun has to be one of my favorite versions of this game. And this really Studio Ghibli type looking game, I have no idea what this is, but look at that, look at those graphics, this looks super interesting. And ending with Dragon Force, a army type RPG with again these Saturn graphics, man. Here's another one of these auction boxes. This, uh, there's a bunch of these all mm -hmm. over the place, and they're they're all just always fun to look at because you can find everything. So this mm -hmm. is another one. He's got a One Punch Man in the back, and a bunch of figures in the front. So here, sure. here's someone is 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 selling their collection, I guess. And they just leave it there. 
Yeah. <laughs> no, I guess he's. I guess he has a box that he's gonna fill out. But this is from the Crane Games. So this is pretty cool. This is the original Gacha line of these these old Pokemon. Twenty eight hundred. So these are actually vintage. Not vintage, but actually from like the 2000s. This is pretty cool, like old, old Zelda. This is almost like 5,000 yen. We got uh, oh, uh, Tifa, Tifa oh, yeah, over there. Figure it there. Then it's time for Dreamcast. Shutoku Battle, we found this on the Super Nintendo, but apparently this is a super long line of games and they're really good. I'm a big fan of this series. If you're into cars, drifting, Japanese cars and, and, and whatnot, this is it. Like It really reminds me of the Wanga Midnight arcade game series and they really have that Dreamcast feel to it. Then we have Cold Decept 2. I have no idea what this is, but it seems to be a board game slash RPG type isometric game. But I do know what this is. Guilty Gear X for the Dreamcast. I played this a lot on the PC and I even used the keyboard. Could you imagine that? This is like their most famous store here. The, this is where they have like all the 50s toys and the tin yeah. cans and stuff. Yeah, like all the old school collectibles that are worth like so much money. Like this right here in the front, this Ultraman is just like 385,000 for... Bro, I'm sure there's replicas of this. These old cars, like this is where, like back in the 50s, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is where most of the Western toys came from, right? They came from Japan. And then these were those toys that I guess they also sold domestically. Another really cool thing that they have here is a store that's completely dedicated to animation cells. So I'll take you through the store right now. These are original sketches and cells that they would use in traditional animation. Like some of these are from the 80s. Some of these are from the 90s and pretty rare even. And it, it surprised me. Like some of these were like $10, $20. They, they really weren't that expensive. Now, of course, these aren't going to be like Dragon Ball or any of these like super famous anime. But there was a different store that had all like the really, really good and expensive ones. But they didn't allow cameras. So I didn't film in there. But this was just really fun to see. And it was really cool to see all these artists have their original artwork and animation cells that were actually used in TV production in the 90s and 80s and even 2000s. So we're about to hit this store called Mandaraki Galaxy. It's, it's one of the most extensive retro game stores that I've ever seen. So I'm gonna skip that and I'm gonna do that to the next video because otherwise this video would be like two hours long. So look out for that one in the future and uh, I'll keep this one for the next video. Look at that, that's, that's, that's crazy. Just the window alone. Look at this giant Shenlong for 80,000 yen. That's actually worth that. I mean, look at it. It's a giant sculpted thing. Then can't forget about the Super Famicom, of course. Here is Front Mission, a Japanese exclusive, but there is a fan translation for this. It's a really good military strategy type game. And here is Metal Max 2. We found Metal Max Final before. This is a RPG, but it's in the style of Mad Max, so it's all mechanical and cars, and it's, it's pretty interesting. It's a pretty unique concept. And another game that I glance over sometimes, but I really wanted to highlight since they had all three, is the Romancing Saga series. It's a, it's a pretty good RPG series. It's on the Super Famicom, and download a fan translation, slap that into your EverDrive, and you'll absolutely not regret it. It's uh, I like it. I like these a lot. I played the first one. I still got to beat the second and third one. Then we have some loose boxes, an uncommon sight in hard-offs or book-offs, but common in stores like this. It's why I like to go to these places sometimes. Really happy to find them. They're not junk. They're in great condition, right? So absolutely worth looking at. And also worth looking at is Dragon Slayer. What an RPG beast the Super Famicom is, hey? And there's the Great Battle, a beat-em-up for the Super Famicom, but it has like all these characters. So there's Kamen Rider, there's Ultraman, there's all these Gundams, like the smaller versions of the Gundams. And it's a pretty fun little playthrough. It's one of those games you would seek out being a Japanese-only game, right? So this is my shop. I always come here all the time. I like that they have every generation yeah. of cars. This is so cool. Like I have a lot of these. Like I have this V-Star, I have this V-Star. It's pretty good. It's a good price right now to buy. I think I have one of these. Still, no, I cracked it. I had one of these, but I opened it. 22,000 yen for it. That's a good price, I guess, as far as the market goes. It's like $150. I'm not happy about it, but what are you going to do, you know? And then in here, it's nothing but hollows. So 160,000 yen, you get all those cards with hollows in them. Are these like prizes for winning the championship? They're like 
given to like people who like enter the tournament. Oh, like attendees. Yeah. This is 2015, 2017, 2019, 2018 Pokemon tournaments. Yeah. These ones are so cool. Do you know what these are? Yeah, the Pikachu with the Rayquaza. There's there's a Mario the one as mascot. well. Yeah. Man, you remember when we like played with these without sleeves in school? Oh my we god. We just like. <laughs> we like fought it. I don't even know where mines are. People would trade like one of these like 9,000 cards for like another crappy one because it was like cooler and we didn't know. So let's take a look at this store's handheld section. They had quite a bit. Here's a Wonder Swan and a GBA that I, I didn't recognize the shell. I think it's official, but it looks like one of those newer ones. Then a 4,500 yen Game Boy Color. That's not bad considering some of the Akihabara ones I've seen go for like 10,000 yen. You are bad at homework, so Doraemon will help you in Doraemon's Quiz Boy 2. Dragon Quest Monsters, really cool. I love RPGs in a smaller format, right? On the Game Boy Color like this. It's just so cozy to play, I don't know. Then Donkey Kong 2001 or Donkey Kong Country on the Game Boy Color. An amazing port of this game, absolutely give it a shot. Considering they took all these 3D renders and this giant game from the Super Nintendo and scaled it all down and packed it into a Game Boy Color cartridge, I don't know, it's just definitely something that's worth trying. If only from a technological standpoint, how they managed to pull this off, I don't know, it's impressive. The original Kirby's Dreamland for the Game Boy is 3780 I gotta say, these are not cheap games by any means, but it's fun to see them. Considering it's just a different selection, like Wizardry and Twinbee here. These are games that you usually don't find in your average thrift store. These are more like specialized games that collectors would look for. Not Super Mario Land, of course. This is a super common game, but <laughs> 5,000 yen, oof. Then Saga, the Final Fantasy Legend series. Again, RPGs on the Game Boy, scaled down. Can't, can't get me enough of that. Animal Breeder 2, I, I don't know what this is. I think it's just an, a game where you raise animals. You get one in a crystal ball and then you raise it like a Tamagotchi. Muscle Ranking Game Boy 3. This one is based on one of those challenge TV shows that we had in Japan. Cross Hunter, another RPG that I would love to try but I don't have and don't really know anything about. But this is another one of those stores that would get me to go here instead of Akihabara. These are magazines and not just any magazines. This is how manga or comics are traditionally distributed in Japan. There's a weekly, monthly, depending on the magazine uh, issue and it would have one chapter of a comic. And if it's popular enough, the comic gets its own release and its own book and whatever. But before that, it comes out in a magazine like this. There's Shonen Jump, there's other ones and almost all of your favorite manga originated in a magazine like this. And what makes a store like this so special, these go all the way to the 70s. Like these are old, old. Some of them are hundreds of dollars and some of them are like 500 to a thousand dollars depending if it's like the first appearance of any character, just like comics are in the West, right? So yeah, an absolute gem of a store if you're into Japanese pop culture in any way. All right, there you have it. Thank you so much for your time today, man. Of course, brother. That was pretty cool. Yeah. That's, uh, so you come here often? You live pretty close, right? Yeah, I live in Nakano, so I come here whenever I can. All right. Uh, almost every day. Almost every day. <laughs> almost. See what yeah. they got. Especially with these auction boxes, you'll never know what, what kind of cool stuff you're gonna find, right? No, definitely. All right, so if you guys like this, check out Okowari TV on Instagram. If you guys want to book a bar tour or he does all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah, custom tours, whichever you guys need. Your Pokemon page is? Poke Hearts. Poke Hearts. I'll both. put both in the description. Yeah, right. but thank you for having me. Thank you for letting me show you around. Definitely. I had a really good time today. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit that dislike button if you didn't. And be sure to hit the subscribe. Check out Okawari's channels and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Peace.